Hi, glad you could join us. I'm Annette Sherman. This is Community. Community. Our community has a population that is older than most communities. Now, I don't know that that's statistically accurate, but our community is an older community. And because of that, certain statistics change. For instance, the number of people needing hearing aids because we are an older community, that is roughly 30 to 35 percent, whereas elsewhere it's probably 25, 20 to 25. Uh, that fact is what it is. However, there are wonderful, wonderful hearing aids today, and my special guest is very, very knowledgeable about those things because she is a doctor of audiology. Let me introduce my special guest, Pat McCarthy, Dr. Pat McCarthy. And Pat and I have been friends, gosh, what, 30 years? Long time. Long time. <laughs> and uh, one thing, I, well, many things I'd like to say about Pat. She's a very caring as well as knowledgeable doctor. And the kind of person that you want to go to if you have a problem, particularly a hearing problem, which is so peculiar at times. It's, it's not a simple problem. And I don't want to dwell on that because we'll be talking quite a bit about the problem of, of hearing loss. Uh, Dr. McCarthy, before we start talking about hearing loss, yes. tell us a little bit about your background and training. Thank you, Annette. Um, I have been in the field of communication as both a speech pathologist and audiologist for almost 40 years now. So that's been quite and a long time. And you only look 35 years. Isn't that that's great? That's amazing, Pat. <laughs> yes. And I've been back in the Sarasota area, which is a community I grew up in, for the last 20 years, working with Dr. Roger Shea at Shea ENT Clinic, predominantly in the hearing portion of uh, communication, working on helping people remediate whatever problems they may have. One nice thing, well, many nice things about walk, working with Dr. Shea is I remember the first time I went to your office and to check me out, and Dr. Shea checked me out and found that I didn't have any terrible diseases and I, there was no real problem with the interior of, uh, of my uh, hearing system. Uh, that was comforting. Yes. And having Dr. Shea there is a comforting aspect of, of the, the system that you and he put together. It's yes. very workable, and it's very conveniently located. It's off B Ridge. B Ridge Road, yes. Going east, and uh, you'll see these big numbers, and the number you're looking <coughs> for is? 5432. 5432. Yes, just oh, east well, that's of easy. Honor. It's very, just count backwards. You do count got it. backwards. I always count backwards. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, I'll give you, give you a phone number a little later on in the program, so get your pencils ready to take some notes. Okay. Let's talk about your background and your training mm -hmm. just a bit. All right, so I was uh, trained at the University of Florida where I got both my bachelor's, master's, and doctorate degree. I also did my master's work in audiology at University of Georgia, and I've completed a fellowship at Duke University. So I've okay, that, that, uh, that's darn good training. Darn good. <laughs> you add to that, the temperament and personality of Dr. McCarthy, and that is to do the best for her patient. Not to sell them a hearing aid necessarily, although that might be included in the package because they need it, but it is not her goal. Her goal is to work to see that that instrument is the one that is properly to be used and that it will continue to give service and will help hearing. Uh, you'll see what I mean if you visit Pat McCarthy and how caring she is and how knowledgeable she is. Uh, both wonderful assets, Pat. Thank you. Uh, okay, let's talk about... Uh, people think that 
you just go into a place that sells hearing aids and pick up one and push it into your ear, and maybe if you push two, one in each ear, mm -hmm. and you just, oh, that's wonderful, I can hear perfectly, and you just go about your life. Uh-uh. Yeah. No, unfortunately not. There's a process to being fit with a hearing aid that takes a good 30 or 40 days, and it would requires a commitment on the audiologist's part and the uh, patient's part to get to that best final result. Now, there is a certain amount of resistance. Uh, I guess it is in anything of this sort. Yes. Let's move a little bit back before we pick up where mm -hmm. we left off. What might someone, let's we give a, a person a specific, oh, let's say 70 some years of age. Right. And uh, what might be the signal, what might be the signs that his or her hearing is starting to decline, not, not behaving as it should. Right. Well, I think one of the first things are family members start to notice and they will, spouses will complain that their spouse is not hearing or listening. The TV is being turned up to a level that's uncomfortable for the better hearing spouse. Uh, the person starts to complain that their people are mumbling. That's why I don't want to talk to them because they just mumble or they avoid their more soft spoken friends or social situations with noise around them. So all of those are little kind of signs that, hey, maybe something may, going may on. be, but may not be. May not be. You're absolutely right. That's why the best way to find out is to come in and get your hearing tested. Okay. We're going to give you the telephone numbers and all of that kind of thing in just a few moments. Mm -hmm. Get your pencils ready. But all right. So they, they notice that something is different. Yes. As they age and uh, so they might call uh, an audiologist or ask their friends, what, who do you go to? Mm -hmm. And that's a good way to uh, get a recommendation. And then they'll make an appointment. Absolutely. Okay. As I said, in your situation, I guess Dr. Shea would examine them first. If they come in through our office with Dr. Shea, they can see the doctor and be, have their hearing tested. Um, and yes, and he can explain to that patient as, as, as I can as well, uh, what kind of hearing loss they have. Is there any medical management for the hearing loss? Because certainly we want to do that if it's possible. Or is it just the usual uh, aging noise exposure type of hearing loss that takes its toll over a lifetime of listening? Okay, one would think, looking at the, the, the ads in the newspapers, and they're more and more frequent, it seems, and they're, they're not just little ads, they're full page ads, and oh, yeah. A lot of them. Right. And uh, it would make it seem, if you read that, you just walk in, you just say, well, those look pretty. I'll take those. And you pluck them into your ear right. and you go merrily on your way. Mm -hmm. Uh-uh. No. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make this point because I think it's important. When you go in and you get fit with a hearing aid, uh, we, the initial fitting is, is um, is set based on your age, your experience with hearing aids, and the hearing loss. That's called the first fit formula. Only about 10% of people are going to end up on their first, first fit formula. Everybody needs adjustments and modifications in the programming. So I'm going to get on my little um, bandwagon here and tell everybody that when you go to your audiologist for a hearing aid fitting, make sure that office verifies the fit with good real ear aided response measurements. It's the only way we know we're getting the sound where we want it to be. So that, I'm gonna say that again, I'm sure on the show. No, no, that's that important measure. because Very. I think that there are people, like in any profession, like mm -hmm. in any field, mm -hmm. who are more interested in the dollar than in the doing or, or the doing what they should be doing. Uh, it, it is very important and uh, it doesn't take a long period of time, and it's technically advanced at this point. It's best practice to do these measurements, absolutely. Yeah, so that it is not as tedious as it used to be. Not uh, at all. It's also more uh, accurate than it used to be. And educational. It, it helps the patient to see on the screen, this is what I'm doing, and this is why I'm doing it, and this is why this sound is going to benefit you. All right, now, so there are one manufacturer's hearing aid, I, I, I'm sorry, if I'm, I'm uh, maybe not right for you, right. whereas 
another manufacturer's hearing aid, the, the, the item that the manu they manufacture, is more appropriate for the hearing difficulty that you're experiencing. Yes. Okay. So that, again, is up to the experienced doctor of audiology yes. to find which one is the one that's best. Now, you can't do it by the name alone. No, and you can't do it, uh, you can't try every single hearing aid on the market. So in discussion with your audiologist, you're going to talk about how your hearing loss is impacting you and what type of features you want in the hearing aid that you're going to get, as well as what level of technology. So the level of technology can dictate the noise reduction, the control I have over the programming, the way the hearing aid can automatically adjust itself in different environments. So that, that, I mean, unfortunately, as you go up in technology, you go up in price. So we want to set that based on your lifestyle. What's going to suit your needs? If you're busy, active, social, you may want a hearing aid that can adjust more automatically as you go into a noisy restaurant or back into the quiet room or, or whatever you're doing, as opposed to somebody who's uh, at, a, at a retirement point in their life where they're not as socially active. My goal always, however, is that once I get you hearing better, you're going to be out there doing all those fun things again. Dr. McCarthy, uh, the price, mm -hmm. does it go up? Yes. It, yes. It, 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 the more you, the more detail that... The, the thing that goes up is the level of technology. That little computer chip dictates the price of the hearing aid. There are a lot of features in a hearing aid that are not in, that the price does not impact. You can get those at any level of technology and it's not really an add-on. If you want rechargeability, if you want Bluetooth connectivity to uh, stream information into your hearing aids from your phone or your tablet, if you want a telecoil so you can access the loop system and most of our uh, performing venues and a lot of our churches and synagogues in town are now looped. All those features don't impact the price. It may impact the style and the size of the hearing aid, but not the price. Now, not everyone is correctable maximally. No. I know that I had, and I explained this to you at one point, uh, years ago, uh, visiting a friend in Seattle, uh, and she, uh, hired a, a private plane right. to take us around uh, and show us Seattle. Mm -hmm. And the pilot warned me and the other two women who do, don't, do not take out that earplug mm -hmm. that he gave me. And as we were talking and laughing, I did take it out and mm -hmm. I uh, did something to my, to my hearing apparatus, which has not really been completely uh, yes healed or it will be, it won't be rather, right. ever be, so that uh, something like that can impede perfection with hearing aids. However, uh, the idea here is to check out what is possible and not just go in and say, oh, those look nice, I think I'll take them, and mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. No, to find out how it can be adjusted to your needs and a good audiologist an experienced audiologist will do that. Mm -hmm. So expect that kind of, of treatment, that kind of help when you go to an audiologist that they will adjust the hearing aids and will have you come back and, mm -hmm. and Many times. check on your notes that you've made. I, I didn't hear very well while I was in the restaurant, it was so noisy, or I heard very well when somebody was speaking, whatever. Uh, and, and so that your audiologist can deal with these notes and perfect the hearing aid, the use of the hearing aid. Now, hearing problems, they're investigating them now and they are finding that hearing problems can sometimes be connected to other adjustments, other age, other related age uh, problems. Yes. and. When they deal with something and discover something, it means they're going to find solutions for them and cures for them. So we're yes. all looking forward to that. Okay. What kind of hearing equipment uh, are we talking about today? In terms of hearing aids? Yes. There are, there are uh, tr 
there are six main manufacturers of, of hearing aids, and they, they really push the market in developing uh, all the advances that take place. So hearing aids are getting better and better with each new generation. So um, it's not the style of the hearing aid, whether you wear one behind your ear or in your ear. It's the circuit inside that helps the hearing aid function properly. And hearing aids are so much better in picking out the speech from the noise around you in finding that speech signal, in controlling feedback, in making you more comfortable with your own voice as you're speaking, which can be off-putting for some people when they hear their own voice louder. So all of those advances are really, really uh, exceptional and making more and more people satisfied with their, with their hearing aids. I have been seeing, and I think I might have mentioned this because I wrote, made a note, uh, these ads in the newspaper, mm -hmm. they're not just small ads, they're big full page ads or half page ads. Mm -hmm. And they make it seem as if you could just walk in and push it in your yeah. ear and you're, you're done. Uh, not so. Uh, uh, I don't want to, I'm sure that many of those people are reputable. I don't know why I'm sure about that, but, <laughs> yeah. but I would imagine that they are. Yes. And, uh, but it's not that simple. No, it's not. Getting a hearing aid is a process, and you have to be willing to commit to that 30 or 40 days. In my office, I'm a little bit, I, I find myself very hands-on. So I want you to come back once a week for four to five weeks, and every week that four, you... Four to five. Correct. Because it sounded like 45. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> four to five weeks, or however long it takes um, to get that best fitting. So when you come back, you, you, like you said a moment ago, you're going to tell me what was good about the hearing aid and what wasn't as good, and we'll make some adjustments. I'll talk to you about what I'm doing because educating you about this whole process empowers you to be more proactive about what you want. And, um, and then we'll make those adjustments. You go out, try them the next week, come back, say, hey, we're getting closer, but why don't we work on this little thing? And we work on it. And, and until that, it takes the brain a good 30 to 40 days to get used to sound that it hasn't been hearing this well in a very long time. So we want to give the brain that full opportunity. That's why, by law, we are protected and allowed a 30-day trial period at a minimum to take home and try hearing aids and have the ability to say at the end, no, I don't think I want them, or hey, this is really great, I'm, I'm going to keep them. Okay. Um then there are people who are not going to be sufficiently helped and with hearing aids. Mm -hmm. And uh, what, what, is, uh, what is there for the, those people? Well, as, as you begin to lose, for some people, and again, this is not the majority, but for some people, as they lose their hearing and their ability to discriminate declines, as, they, as that continues on over the course of their lifetime, they will get to a, they may get to a point where hearing aids don't benefit them. And if we get to a certain level of hearing loss and reduced understanding, they may be a perfect candidate for a cochlear implant. Cochlear implants. Okay, yes. that's another topic. Yes. Because it is something that, that obviously is a, a an alternative mm -hmm. at a certain point and may not be an alternative for Correct. a lot of people who are exceptionally happy with right. their hearing aids and I know several of them mm -hmm. that are very very happy thank you Dr. <laughs> Carthy uh, that that are just delighted good with them yes and uh, so this is something that uh, well I know Pat McCarthy so well, and I know the way she deals with her patients, with her clients, and it's it's a very very personal and hardworking relationship, and she takes it seriously. I mean, she should. She is the doctor of audiology, but she takes it seriously as a challenge to find just the right hearing aids and to uh, see to it that you, the patient, understands what is necessary, such as two rather than one, because that's the way your brain functions, yes, getting the help from the two hearing aids, mm -hmm. and wearing them uh, enough so that you can absolutely uh, get benefit from them. So I'm going to give you that phone number, and it's a very easy one. Mm -hmm. And let's put that on the screen, please, Damon and Joe. 
941, of course, is right in here in Sarasota. 342 Easy. 342 9494. You can look it up. If you can't write it down right now, you can look it up. It's Dr. Pat or Patricia McCarthy, and it's on Bee Ridge Road, and that, that's enough. You can look it up and get the number, but the number is so easy, 342-9494. Uh, Pat will accommodate most people time crunch. If it's early or a little later, uh, because that's the kind of doctor she is. And it's very important to her to see the client. And you've had these wonderful stories of people that when you do get the, the precise hearing aids mm -hmm. that are wonderful, I remember you told me stories that they, they called you up and said, I've heard birds. I haven't heard birds in 20 years. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And I tell you what, when I start a trial with somebody, I almost always say to them, let's go back and let's have some fun. It's kind of exciting to, to see people just their eyes widen. They go, yeah. wow. Yeah. And yeah. then I always like to, after I get them fit, turn the hearing aids off. And they said, wait, something just happened. And I said, yeah, this is how you hear without hearing aids. And turn them back on, and they're just like, wow, I'm ready to really see if we can make this work. Call Dr. McCarthy. Yeah. Uh, the, the, uh, it's very easy to, to get through to her and to make an appointment. And that first appointment, I think, would just be a, a research kind of thing where mm -hmm. she's going to check and see where your hearing is and exactly. what kind of help you need. But I think you'll call me and you'll thank me. And I'm, I appreciate that. And uh, I genuinely appreciate Dr. Pat McCarthy. Thank you. Because she becomes a dear friend with all of her attention and all of her knowledge and all of her caring. Would you believe we're almost out of time? That was very yes. quick. <laughs> And uh, I, I, I do want to, uh, uh, there's some, uh, I got a wrong time cue. There's some uh, thinking that, that uh, I want to ask you about. And uh, I think I know the answer. You read, this is going to be against the law, Pat, what I'm going to say. <laughs> Articles in the newspaper or magazines, and they tell you you can just go in and instead of spending whatever they, they think they have, you have to spend for hearing aid. But you can buy this stuff, this, these hearing aids or whatever they call them, for some ridiculously in, inexpensive, ridiculously, ridiculously right. small amount. And you will hear and you'll save your marriage and you'll do all these wonderful things. No. Well, I don't think so at any rate. What do you think, Doctor? Well, there are uh, very inexpensive, you know, in magazines, on TV, personal uh, amplifying systems, and they're simply there to amplify all sound. So in a crunch, they can help you hear the TV better. They can help you hear your spouse, <clears throat> excuse me, but they're not going to work very efficiently when you go out to that noisy restaurant or have multi-speakers that you're trying to interact with. Or you're speaking with. to somebody and you want to hear what they're saying. Right. So, it, uh, so there's some benefit as a beginning point. And in fact, uh, there's just been a law passed that they're going to try to introduce some over-the-counter hearing aids. So within the next couple years, you might walk into your CVS and say, okay, that looks, that's a picture of my audiogram. I'm going to take this home and try it. I'm not quite sure how it's all going to work yet. But the goal of that is for the, very big, the person with the very beginning of hearing loss but who has some impact um, gives them an, an avenue to start the process inexpensively Get, okay. you know, kind of learn about So you, the you're process. tolerant of that because it, it, yeah, it's not, obviously they can probably get that start with a genuine hearing aid yeah. as well, but if they don't want to spend that much money, right. they, they, they can start with, with one of those uh, non-hearing aids, but yeah. they, they're they uh, magnifying. Uh, yes, and, and, and we all want to approach this whole uh, process with a, with a very tentatively because we know that when I fit a hearing aid, as I said, only 10% of people or less are absolutely satisfied with that first fit that I give them. It's a process of changing things. So when you go in the store and buy something, there's nobody there to help you change things, talk you through the process, teach you how to use it. So there may be some little uh, things that are going to give us trouble when that hits the market, but my goal is if, you, if I can do anything to help people hear better, and I know people's 
finances dictate certain price points. I want to give you the best I can at the price point you can afford. I think that uh, you love Dr. McCarthy, not in, <laughs> not in, in the, in the uh, intimate <laughs> sense, but as, as a physician and as someone that can help you. I think that uh, knowing her for as many years as I have, I've yet to see any aspect of her personality that wasn't genuine and caring and knowledgeable. So with that recommendation, call Pat McCarthy. Mm -hmm. It's 362, I'm sorry, 342, 342. You can put that on the screen. Damon there, oh, it's good. Okay, 342-9494 and uh, located on Bay Ridge Road going east and before you get to, to Cattleman Road, you'll see the, the big numeral sign that uh, on your right going east. And it's a lovely office. It's, it's, it's very pleasant and uh, very nice people. And obviously, uh, I recommend them. So we're just about out of time, maybe a few more minutes. Uh, and I do want to remind people that uh, our upcoming Community Video Archive Luncheon will be April the 16th. Now, if you're watching this after April the 16th, which you may, in fact, on YouTube, it's going to be on YouTube, and, and that's wonderful. Uh, well, you missed it. <laughs> <laughs> it was April the 16th, and it was a fabulous event with four outstanding people, Michael Donald Edwards, who is the artistic director at the Oslo, uh, Sarah Beth Kalajan, who is our library's, uh, head of our library system, uh, Christine Jennings, who has had enormous success with wonderful, with some varied organizations, and Dr. Murph Murray Clauber. And Dr. Clauber is Michael Clauber, who owns Michael's on East, that's his dad, and his dad was, was head CEO of the uh, Colony Beach Club and uh, was such a wonderful person and wonderful leader. He uh, made the Colony Beach Club the number one tennis resort in the United States of America and brought a lot of uh, interest to Longboat Key. We're just about out of time. Pat, thank you for taking time out of your busy day to be with us. Thank you. And uh, come on again if there are any new things we should know about. I've got to say bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> thank you. <laughs>